Hi folks, Shabbat Shalom. That's Saturday night. <clears throat> and uh, this video is on one God. And uh, I have a number of verses, but I wanted to express to you or just share with you a thought, okay? Um, when people, I'm like anybody else. I've gone the whole gamut of things. I've been a Trinity, uh, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, uh, water, ice, uh, steam, you know, three. But then I also see it as I'm studying the Old Testament, the more and more I get into the Torah, I see it as one God. And even though I verbally say things, I've never had a problem with understanding one God. And I want to give you an example, and I'm going to see if, what your thoughts are on this. Uh, I actually was an artist back in high school and stuff. I did with art classes and I designed a, the poster for the 1976 uh, art fair, city art fair thing and stuff. And uh, But I'm also in the model trains as some of you already know. And I do photography even though I don't know how to run a camera. Even this camera I still put everything on automatic because I don't know how to run it. But I also know how to make a miniature world. See I'm a creator. I'm trying to get it to where the light doesn't reflect on there. And having scenes, this area, uh, matter of fact, if you look at here, there's a grasshopper right here on the track. And, uh, but this is an RDC, uh, 129th scale. Uh, here's another one from the outside. Uh, model trains where you're doing a, a snow or a RC battery powered, you don't have to worry about track and electric power. Uh, these trains can run even in the snow. I love running trains in the snow. I love creating scenes. But as a creator, one of the things that I really, 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 really want to do is I want to be in my creation. I want to be part of my creation. Here's a train that literally, I used to do a thing on a rail fanning in your own backyard. Uh, this engine was going around plowing snow. It was probably about 20 degrees out that day nice and sunny, the, the rail had no ice on it, and I'm following this train as it's plowing snow in my backyard. Whoops. And so, and here's one of the shots that we had for, I've done a num number of photos for catalogs and for products and stuff, and uh, using real live bushes to where you can, uh, and then setting the camera at the right angle and stuff and different lighting. Uh, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, God is one. Me creating my world in my backyard. I had 3,000 feet of track, or almost 3,000 feet. Uh, 20,000 square foot railroad, mountains, hills, tunnels, all that type of stuff. I wanted to be part of my creation, but I can't put all of me into a 129th scale person. Matter of fact, I should have brought him in. I got a little 129th scale person a friend of mine in California made for me because he was an artist on a TV movie set, so he made claymation things. But uh, if I were to make me a 129th miniature and enjoy the realm in which I created, I couldn't put all of me into me as a miniature, but I could put all of who I am into the flesh or the blood of my creation. And how do I talk to, how do I get my creation, how can I explain to them about God or who I am without some kind of a analogy or a metaphor or something that they could relate to? So God sent his son, God the son, on earth. And in order for you to relate better, he, he taught you in his small form how to relate to God, the Creator. And the Holy Spirit, I view as the authority of God. The Holy Spirit is one that says, you, can, you do not, um, he will not forgive you of certain things. God's authority. So, as a creator of a miniature world, I have pictures of me standing by my trees. I have pictures of me working in and among my creation, but I never could be part of my creation. I wanted to be part of my creation so they could see and understand who I was because they'd never seen me. So I became a 129th scale person 
in flesh and blood, and I lived among them. Does that make sense? One God. I have always worked with my creation. I've always done everything to help them and try to get it to work and function. But now I became part of them, one of them. And now since I lived in their flesh and blood, I can now judge them. I can be their high priest. I can totally be more to them than what I could have been before because I now am one of them. See, so one God, one Savior. Uh, and here's a bunch of verses. I know people get tired of the Paul thing, but Paul really screwed up my thinking. The more and more I study the words of Jesus, the words of the prophets, the Torah, and, and just study more and more of this, I'm starting to have a whole different concept of God and the atonement, and it's taking time to get rid of false teachings and false doctrines that slid in so, they sounded so right, but they were so wrong. John 11.25, I, Yeshia, Jesus, am the resurrection and the life. Whosoever, whoever believes in me, though he die, shall he live. Yet shall he live. And that's, of course, when uh, Nazareth, or, uh, Lazarus passed away and stuff at that time. Isaiah 43.11, see, my, my whole mind, mindset is changing about the Old Testament. I, I am the Lord, and besides me there's no Savior. Isaiah 43, 14, thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Isaiah 63, 15, B, you, Lord, are our Father, our Redeemer, from old is your name. Luke 1, 47, my, Mary, my soul magnifies the Lord my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. He's quoting Isaiah. She's quoting Isaiah. She now has physically seen the God that has saved her and transformed her life. That's why there's righteous people. That's why Jesus said, I didn't come for the righteous people. They've already accepted me. They've already repented. They've already turned from their sins. They're walking in God's way. They're honoring him. They're loving him. Isaiah 45, 21b and 22. And there is no other God besides me, a righteous God, a Savior, there is none besides me. Verse 22, turn to me and be saved. He said this way back before the cross. And all the ends of the earth, for I am God and there is no other. That is so outstanding. Jesus was the manifestation in the flesh of all that God's been trying to do for his people. Isaiah 60, 16b. And you shall know that I, the Lord, am your Savior and your Redeemer, the Mighty One of Israel. John 4, 42. For we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this Yeshia is indeed God our Savior. People were recognizing him as being God the Savior. Because he quoted and lived out and did everything that the Father said and did. Yeshia manifested himself in the flesh. His gospel has never changed. Repent, believe, and obey my words. I feel like in the last, in the last months, six months to a year, I've had a personal awakening. And that's why on my website on, on uh, YouTube, uh, a call for the preservation of the saints. Perseverance of the saints. I always say that wrong. Call for the perseverance of the saints who keep the commandment of God and the faith in Yeshia. Revelations 14, 12, a personal awakening for me. It's like all this controversy, all these different people are debating and arguing and different things. And it's like, Lord, I'm seeing, I'm following Yahweh. I'm following God the Father. I'm following and walking the way. I want to be with him. I want to know him. I want to fulfill the first commandment. It's not about church. It's not like I had a good friend drop by today. And uh, Christian, he, he's just an incredible guy, you know? And uh, he encourages me all the time. He, uh, I know, you're probably watching the video too. I'll send you a check. <laughs> no. um, I lost my train of thought there. But we are to follow the Father. To love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy mind, and all thy soul. And... I think in church we get so busy trying to do the things of church and God that we forget about Him. 
He says, me first. You worship and follow me. Then I will tell you what to do. Then I'll have you do these things. My words. This is, this is another, another little short thing that I have. Jesus' word, John 12, 49 and 50. For I have not spoken of my own, but the Father who sent me has himself given me a commandment about what to say and what to speak. Verse 50. And I know that his commandment is eternal life. What I speak, therefore, I speak just as the Father has told me. If I'm Marty Kozat and I want to live on my model railroad and I become a miniature thing, the only way I can relate to me is that I'm the Father. I'm doing and saying everything. Jesus makes it so absolutely clear. Mark 13, 31. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words, will, they will not pass away. Luke 9, 26. For whoever is ashamed of me and my words and of him will the Son of Man be ashamed when he comes in his glory. And the glory of the Father and of the angels. Luke 24, 44, Jesus said, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, in the law of Moses, and the prophets, and the psalmists must be fulfilled to do fully. John 5, 47, but if you do not believe Moses' writings, how will you believe my words? I have people tell me the Old Testament is not for today. Throw the Old Testament away. That's incredible. That's scary. John 6, 63b, the words that I've spoken to you are spirit and life. They're life. John 8, 47, Whoever is of God hears the words of God. John 12, 47. If anyone hears my words and does not keep them, I do not judge him. John 14, 10b. The words that I say to you, I do not speak of my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Back to that other verse. I don't know why I didn't keep the rest of it. It said, do not judge. I did not come to this. I do not keep my words. I do not judge him. But the words that I speak, the rest of that verse is the words that I speak, they will judge him. The words that are written, God's words. I didn't, I didn't say the whole Bible. I said God's words. There's a big difference there. John 14, 10b. The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. One God. John 14, 23 and 24. If anyone loves me, he will keep my words. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words. It's scary, guys. We are so programmed that the Bible, that the New Testament is God's all words. All of God's words. And it's not. Paul is in there. And he's a test from God. Check it out. Test it out. Here's a guy I found this. He gives five reasons why I love Paul. And most of it is all based on the outward appearance. But here's the last statement he says. These are five of the reasons I have deep affection and admiration and thankfulness for the Apostle Paul. First of all, he was not an apostle. He did not meet the qualifications. I love him. I believe what he taught. I hear the ring, the ring of truth in his letters. That almost sounds like he, not all of everything in his letters are true. I see the mark of divine reality in his life and in his teachings. People esteem Paul greater than Jesus. They don't. They say they don't, but I. Most of the time, people quote Paul's verses, and even the ones who debate me sometimes knows not to use Paul's verses, but they are hard pressed to find Jesus's verses to back up what they believe because Jesus never taught that. And same way with, um, uh, I lost my train of thought right there. But uh, anyway, um, it, it's just, just frightening people. We need to be awakening. We need an awakening. You need to personally search out what, if you, if you say you agree with Paul, do me a favor, set his words aside and study out what Jesus says. Study out the Old Testament. 
just set them aside. If, if, you, if you think Paul is all of God and all right, for now, just test it. Read the other stuff without reading Paul's stuff. And you're going to see the difference. Um, it, it's, it's serious, people. Uh, I've been called every, every name. Even someone here, just one of my friends from the past, used a cuss word on there, and I should have copied it out and saved it. But uh, he just said, when I, anyway, it's sad. The attacks of people. And so we have got to find out, you have got to find out, and you've got to walk with the, with the Father. You need to obey Him. Jesus always told us how to pray to the Father. He always told us to go to the Father. He always told us to do, He always focused on the Father. Okay? And so, um, that's serious. So, Father God, you are so awesome. I am so grateful, Lord, for the direction that you're teaching me and heading me, and I just hunger for your word just nonstop. I just got to learn how to convey the information and how to, to share it with others and keep praying and stuff. Father God, I just pray that uh, you'll continue to, to work, work in our lives. Sin, if there's sin in our lives, that's an evidence that there's a problem. Lord, every night I go before you, I don't want to have any sin in my life. I want to be righteous before you and blameless and obedient. And so many people tell me, you can't do that. You can't do it. It's only Jesus' righteousness. See, the Pauline doctrine has just really screwed things up. Jesus says, yeah, I want you to be righteous as I'm righteous. Holy as I'm holy. I was an example. Jesus was the example to show us that it can be done in the flesh. And we'll be accountable for that. Help us, Holy Spirit. Guide us, protect us. And the precious son of Yeshia, Yoshia. See, I can't say it right. I need to have my teeth in there. So in the Lord Jesus, amen.